Hey, my name is Patrick Mawinney. I'm with Prestige Shrub and Tree, and uh, we're going to show you today uh, some techniques on pruning. Uh, this is obviously in the fall, and so it's really not the time to do heavy pruning, uh, but um, you see these, uh, these plants where they get the what we call fall shooting, and uh, it's um, perfectly fine to prune uh, these tall shoots off a plant. Uh, and uh, as it gets colder, this, um, uh, this will uh, help the plant look better going into uh, Christmas time. And uh, you won't initiate a lot of new growth, so you're not going to really hurt the plant. Uh, what you don't want to do is get into the body of the plant, do real heavy pruning because that will initiate new growth, and, you may, and then you may get some frost off. And um, so uh, what I want to show you today, one important thing is that you need a good pruner. We prefer Felco pruners. Uh, the Felco pruners are extremely sharp, uh, it's a very high quality instrument. Uh, you can have an uh, anvil pruner. The problem with anvil pruners is they tend to crush the, um, uh, the, the, the plant, uh, and when you do a cut on it, a sharp anvil pruner is okay, but bypass pruners, which the Felco pruners are, they make a, make a nice clean cut. You don't get cell tissue uh, crushing, so you, the, uh, the plant can very quickly uh, seal up from that. Uh, plants don't heal anything, they actually seal the wounds off. So again, a real sharp pruner is, is critical. Uh, a little bit later we may talk about saws, and uh, the saws are also extremely sharp. So uh, what I'm going to show you today is we've got a, a plant here that tends to do this, this, this uh, tall shooting uh, as we move into late summer, and it makes the plant unsightly. You can see we've got a really um, odd form and a uh, odd shape to it. So what we want to do is we've got the pruners, the Felco pruners, and again, these blades are replaceable, which is nice. Uh, they're extremely sharp, and as they get older and duller, instead of trying to sharpen them, what, you, what you're going to do is just replace the blade. Uh, they are a little more expensive, but uh, for, um, for good pruning, this is the way you need to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk in here, and really, on this type of plant, we're just going to take these shoots off. And uh, so I'm going to do the whole plant. We're going to come back down in here and make a prune about that deep. One thing you need to understand about pruning is that if you prune, uh, it's always a local effect. So if I prune right here at the end and prune that off, you're going to get break, uh, leaf break right underneath where you've made that pruning cut. And what happens there is, so if I prune this plant very high, it's going to try to break out right here, which leaves you with that same legginess. So what you're after is reaching in here and doing a deeper prune back down in the body of the plant. So I'm just going to move that in there, and you can see how fast these cut. This is very sharp, no effort whatsoever to make that pruning cut. Again, <clears throat> anvil pruners, they tend to crush that. Even a sharp anvil pruner, that will start compressing that stem, where this bypass, like a scissors, cuts it very cleanly. Now within about 24 hours, this plant will seal that wound up. You don't need to put any type of sealant on it. It's actually not good for the plant to try to seal them up. You may even get a little bit of um, sap, a little water movement out of the end of that plant. That's not a problem. Uh, today we're pruning and it's about probably um, about 50, in the mid 50s today. Um, and we've got rain coming up and what's going to happen is this plant will respond to that rain and you will probably see a little bit of, uh, of oozing or weeping. And that's perfectly fine. That's the way the plant helps seal the wound off. So I'm going to come over here again and you notice this this is a heavier branch, it's been grown for a while, but I'm going to reach down in here and prune that off right there. And so you can see the shape suddenly, now we have our shape back to this plant. This is a fairly low spreading plant, but it does tend to have that habit where it's going to um, uh, get those, those shoots. Um, other plants this time of year in fall, we really don't want to go after uh, a lot, but again, the, the, um, the fall shooting, there's not a problem at all to go in and clean that up. You'll notice in here I'm not pruning these laterals off. That's going to be something that you're going to do in the spring. Uh, you do need to be aware that uh, depending on the plant, there are times you can prune them and times you shouldn't prune them as far as removing flowers. Uh, Extension Service has that information and uh, they've got some really great circulars on pruning. So we're going to move now over to a plant called the Sasanqua camellia. The Sasanqua camellia uh, blooms in the fall. Uh, it's finishing its blooming now, and it also does that fall shooting, so I'm going to show you that, a plant that actually has flowers on it, and you can still do some uh, cleanup pruning with that. This is a Sasanqua camellia. It's one of the white blooming camellias. Uh, you have two basic uh, camellias. You've got a uh, Sasanqua, and you've got a Japonica camellia. The Japonicas bloom <coughs> in the spring normally, though sometimes they will bloom in the fall. The Sasanqua is a very strong fall bloomer. 
So you can see we've got the white flowers on there. This is actually moving out of its bloom. Uh, you can see we've got some really nice looking flowers and some older, uh, more dead looking flowers on here that are de deteriorating. But you'll see again, this is doing this fall shooting. This is really common for this plant. <coughs> um, this, um, there's not a problem right now taking this leggy stuff off of this plant. Uh, you never really want to shear prune plants. Uh, plants are much better pruned by doing a hand pruner. Uh, when you start using a, a head shear, uh, you get this shape to the plant. The plant doesn't like it as much. It doesn't grow as well. And eventually what happens is you end up uh, it with a shell of leaves around the outside of the plant with nothing on the inside of the plant. And you notice this one, as you reach down in here, you've got leaves six, eight inches down inside the plant. And that's what we're after. That makes for a healthy plant. You have to remember that the, um, that the food factories are the leaves. When you fertilize a plant, all you're doing is putting nutrients down. The plant taps into those nutrients and then moves them up into the leaves. And then, of course, the food is made through, uh, through um, um, with the chlorophyll and the, uh, and the sunlight process. And it makes food for the plant and then it feeds itself. So if you do a, a shell type of pruning, shear pruning, you don't have as many food factories and then you don't have a, a, a healthy plant. So what we're going to do here is just take some of this off. Again, with the Felco pruners, extremely sharp. Uh, make sure you don't get your finger in the way. Uh, but I'm just going to grab this and reach in here. And you'll notice, again, I'm reaching down further into the plant. You don't want to prune out here at the end because if you prune there, it's going to break right here and you'll still have a leggy branch. So I'm going to move down inside here. It's called reach-in pruning. Some plants you can do this to other plants you don't. For instance, boxwoods, you don't do reach-in pruning because they will leave a hole in it. very slow to respond to pruning. But I'm just going to reach in about two, three inches into the body of the plant. Again, we're not doing heavy pruning into the body, but we're taking these leggy shoots off. This will also start growing in the spring again, and you can do another pruning and clean this plant up uh, again in the spring uh, before it sets its buds. But it's going to set its buds as you move through the summertime. I'm going to leave that on there since we have a nice flower and just move over here. And you can do this to the whole plant. Just reach in, prune these leggy branches off. It's not critical to pick a place on the, um, on the stem other than just move down inside the body of the plant a little bit, and that's going to give you shape and maintain that nice shape plant. So again, I can come down here on the side, prune this off, and again, we'll just leave the other, um, uh, uh, the, any of the shoots with the flowers, we'll leave that on there and uh, let it finish its uh, bloom out. Okay, what we've got here is a rosia azalea. Uh, the rosia blooms uh, in the spring, in the late spring. Uh, this color is fall color. This is a pink azalea, pink, uh, kind of a dark pink. The dark, um, the, the red and the dark pink azaleas and the pink, light pink, will tend to have a yellow fall color on them. Uh, so will the, um, the, the white. And um, when you move into the dark, deep red azaleas, you tend to get more purple color on the fall color. Uh, but again, this is really not the right time of year to do heavy pruning on azalea because this plant has already set its buds. Okay? It sets its buds after it blooms as you move into August, September. But you'll notice this, again, this fall shooting it does, uh, it makes the plant a little bit rangy, unsightly. Some folks don't like that in the fall. And you can cut these uh, tall shoots off without hurting the main bloom on the plant. Now, if we were to leave this go in the spring, this whole plant would be covered in, in flowers, including these shoots up here. So uh, if it doesn't bother you, just leave it up like this and then prune it after it blooms. Um, if it does bother you, you can just go in here again. And remember, as I said, you don't want to prune out here toward the end. If you just prune that tip off, what happens is it's going to try to break in next spring right here. You still get this legginess. You want to do a reach-in pruning. You're just going to reach down in here and right, right within the body of the plant and take that off. And you notice <clears throat> here's another large shoot right here. I can go in here and take that off. You see, now we get the shape starts to come back. We're going to tune that off right there. Now, I'm not going in and doing a whole lot of pruning, and you don't want to over prune it either. Just take these leggy shoots off if you want to this time of year. Uh, the more you take off, the fewer flowers you have in the spring. But again, this plant will heavily, will heavily flower in the spring, even if you're doing this. Uh, and as I'm looking at this, I can see there's, there's probably a, an immature bud that's already set in there. So there would be a flower up on the end of this in the spring. But we're going to take that one off, reach in here. And um, in fact, if you want to do a close-up, we could probably come, come in here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, again, pruning out here, it's a local effect. If I prune here, next year it'll just break right here. It'll still be leggy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and show you the inside of this plant. 
you can see there's what I call the body of the plant there. I'm just going to reach down a little further in, take that one out. Next year, that's going to break out inside there and keep this plant full. Uh, again, if you do the shear pruning, or you come through here after they bloom and just shear them back, they tend to just have a shell of leaves after a while. It's not as healthy for the plant. If you do the reach-in pruning, you get a lot more robust break in the spring. You get more branches coming out and filling the plant out. Therefore, you're going to have a happier, a healthier plant because you have more leaf tissue making food to, for the plant. So, again, if you feel like that bugs you, you can always come in here and do some light pruning. And again, you notice I pulled that one off that was tall. I'm leaving this one on here. It's close enough to the body of the plant, so I'm not going to take that out. Just these taller leggy plant, leggy branches like that. And you see now we've got the shape comes back to us. And again, you, you can get away with that in the fall for the fall pruning. Just don't get, get into the body of the plant.